Hi everyone, in this video we will study recursion in Java using a simple example. And the example that we are considering here is raising a number to a given power. For example, finding out 2 to the power of 5 or 3 to the power of 4 or something like that. So we are going to solve this problem using recursion. Now there are two important things that we will study here. First, how we write a new method in Java. And second is what is recursion and how we use recursion to solve problems. So first, as you would have noticed, I'm using JDoodle and here we have this class called power calculation. Within this, we, this class, we have our main method here, okay? Now you will notice that there is another method here called power. And this is one of the few examples that you will see in this playlist where we are having another method also within our class. So we will study why this is important and what this does. But before that, let's go and look at line five. So basically what we are interested in this problem is raising a number to a given power. So here we have base, which is three, and we are raising it to the power of four. So essentially we are calculating three raised to power of four. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to calculate the power and store the result in this int result. So whatever three to the power of four evaluates to, we are going to store that in result. Now, we could have written the program in main, but we can't do it using recursion. So we couldn't study recursion. So what we are doing is we are writing a new method called power. So we write a new method and within that method, what we do is we pass base and power raised here. So we are passing base and power raised. This is the way in which you write methods in Java. Okay. Now, this method power takes base and power raised as arguments and it would res return an integer, which is basically stored in result. So let's now go ahead and look at this method. So once again, it's public static, similar to void main, but you will know this is that instead of void, we have int here. This is because this function, this method power actually returns an integer. Okay. And then what it does is it takes this base that's been called here and stores it in this integer base. The power raise that we are calling here or we are passing here is actually stored in this integer power raised. You might think that we have to call this base as the same as base here, power raised the same as power raised. That's not true. You're passing these two variables, base and power raised, are actually defined in the main method and they are being passed to power. You could name the, the base and power raised to something else as well. Okay, so that's not important. So I'll just, uh, we'll see what happens when we change this. We'll see that the code would work just fine. Now, now that we have understood methods in Java, let's try to understand why we need a method to, to solve a recursive problem. And what is recursion? Now in recursion, what we do is we call the same method over and over again. Now, what are we trying to solve using recursion? Now here we are trying to solve 2 to the power of n or 3 to the power of n or something like that, like essentially base to power raised. So what the way to think of recursion is that, and let's just assume that we are doing 3 to the power of 4. Now 3 to the power of 4 is a large problem that you cannot solve. So what you do is, I cannot solve 3 to the power of 4. But if somebody solves 3 to the power of 3 for me, then I can multiply that result with three and then I'll get three to the power of four. Okay, so let's try to just write it down here, what we are thinking. So say you have two to the power of n. You think that two to the power of n is too large. So what you do is you think that, okay, let's try to solve two to the power of n minus one. Because if we can solve two to the power of n minus one or somebody tells you, that you can solve uh, two to the power of n minus one, what you can do is you can just multiply that result with two and then you will get two to the power of n. So 
What you're saying is I can't solve this large problem. So hence, let's try to solve a slightly smaller problem, which is 2 to the n minus 1. Then you are, repeat this argument again. 2 to the power of n minus 1 is too large. I cannot solve 2 to the power of n minus 1. Therefore, let me try to solve a slightly smaller problem, which is 2 to the n minus 2. Now, if you somebody gives you the result of 2 to the n minus 2, what you can do is multiply that result with 2, and then you will get 2 to the n minus 1. Now, once we keep applying this logic, we will come to a case where we are finally trying to solve something like 2 squared, 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 0 will get to that small numbers. When we get to these small numbers, what you realize that at that point, you just know the answer. The problem is so small that the answer is trivial. Now, once we realize that that answer is trivial, we can then use that logic to actually get back 2 to the power of n. So basically, what you will do is you say you can't solve 2 to the power of n. Therefore, you will try to solve 2 to the power n minus 1. Then you will say that 2 to the power n minus 1 is too big. So I'll try to solve 2 to the power of n minus 2. Then 2 to the power n minus 3. Using this logic, at one point you will reach 2 to the power of 0 or 2 to the power of 1, whatever you choose. At that point you will say that this problem is trivial. I know how to solve 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now that you've answered that question, what you're doing is, okay, I know 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Now, now I can solve 2 to the power of 1 by multiplying 2 to this. Once I've solved 2 to the power of 1, I can now get 2 to the power of 2 by multiplying 2 to 2 to the power of 1. Then using this, you have now solved 2 to the power of 2. Using 2 to the power of 2, you can now get 2 to the power of 3. Using 2 to the power of 3, you can now get 2 to the power of 4. And finally, you will be able to get 2 to the power of n. So this is how recursion works. This is the logic of recursion. That is, you keep solving similar problems, but of smaller size. Okay. So here, in this particular method, what we have is power. Now, power, we are passing base. And then we are passing power raised. That's what the initial values are. In this particular problem, at this present time, we have 3 as base and 4 as power raised as 4. Now, first is the base case. So what is the base case in recursion? In the base case in recursion is that case which is trivial to solve. So you know that you can solve a problem even power raised becomes 0 because any number raised to power of 0 is 1. So that is the easy case or the base case. That is the most trivial case where you know that the problem can be solved. Now the recursive case is the interesting case and it's also a little tricky if you're looking at it for the first time. So what you're doing is if power raised is not 0, okay, that's the else case. Because if power raised equal to equal to 0, you're going to return 1. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you are doing this. You're saying that I am going to solve power of base power raised minus 1. That's what I'm going to solve here. And then I'm going to multiply that with base. So basically 2 to the n minus 1, I'm going to get, multiply that with 2 to get 2 to the n. You will notice that within this power method, we are once again calling the power method. The main difference is that every time you're calling this power method, you're actually calling it with power raised minus 1. Whatever is the value of power raised, you are slowly decreasing it. Okay, so let's try to understand this. So let's just write some comments here. So first, base equals 3 and power raised is equals 4. Now when you get to this line 17, what happens is when you're calling this power here, the base that's being passed is will be 3. But power raised is now, that's being passed is power raised minus 1, which is actually 4 minus 1 equals 3. Now you're going to now it's again going to call this method power with 3 comma 3 that is being passed as base and power raised minus 1 is 3. Now within that you're again going to go come back to this and again you're going to call this power. At this point once again base will be 3 but power raised is now going to be 3 minus 1 equal to 
2. Then once again, now you're going to call power with 3, 2. That's what essentially you're calling here. When this happens, you're calling power 3, 2. In the previous line, you had called power 3, 3. Okay. So now, once again, what you're going to have happen is again, you're going to call power because power is power raised is still 2. So it will not enter in this part of the code. Okay. So now base will be again 3. And power raised, you're going to call power with power raised equals 2 minus 1 equals 1. So you're going to call power once again with 3 comma 1. Now once again, when you call power, it will come to this line. You'll say the power raised is 1. It's not equal to 0. So you will go to the else case. Again, you will call power with base equals 3 and power raised equals 1 minus 1 equals 0. So power, you're going to call that with 3 comma 0. Okay. Now at this point, once you call power, you will come here and say that power raised equal to, equal to 0. Therefore, you will enter into this return statement right here. So it's going to return 1. That is what is going to happen. So you're going to have return 1. Now, when one returns, it will return back to this step. That's where it will. And you will note that there is base always getting multiplied in front of that. Okay, so I'll just write base. Let's copy this over here. So there's a base that is always getting multiplied in front of that. Okay. And we'll just copy this over here as well and put it. So it's base 3. So here, when you get, when we get back to this return, this return is getting return one. So what is going to happen is it's going to be three basis three times one, because this is where we're stuck. It had called there is this base in front of it, it is three. Then it had called power base power raised minus one, which was zero, and that had returned one here. So it will now be three times this. Will have evaluated to one that's what will be there which will be equal to three that will return to the previous step which is here that will be you have once again base which is three and power three comma one we have solved it that is actually three so it will actually be nine and nine will be returned back to this state here what you will have is once again three which is base times power three comma two has just been evaluated to nine so you are going to put that here and we're going to get 27. Okay. And here, what we have is we're going to have 3 times 27, which is 81. And here we don't have actually base power. Uh, base star, we are just having 3 and 4, and we call this. So this will come here, and that is what is going to be returned. So you to solve this, we called here. So we went from this line to this line to this line to this line to this line. Then when we got to this return, we started returning everything back. Okay. So that is essentially how this is going to slowly get evaluated. So this is how recursive code works. Okay. So just to understand, when power raised became equal to equal to zero, you returned. Then you multiplied three with one, gave you three. Then you went back and basically you got the answer of three to the power of one. Then you use that to get three to the power of two here. Then you use three to the power of two to get three to the power of three. And then you use multiply three to the power of three to get essentially three to the power of four. Okay, so that is essentially what we have solved here. Okay, so let's execute this code and see how our, what happens. It'll give you three to the power of four equals 81. If you, if you, if you change two, power raised is 5, we will see that it will evaluate to 32. So 2 to the power of 5 evaluates to 32. This system.print, system.out.println actually prints the result out. Okay? So in recursive case, you keep calling the same method. So what did we learn here? We learned basics of recursion and we understand, understood how to write a new method. So these are two things. If you have never seen methods, 
in Java outside main, this is how you write method. So you, this is going to be the return type. So every method should return something. Main does not return anything. That's why it is void. Here you're returning an integer. That's why you have an int. And you take base and you take power. Raise, these are the two arguments. Okay, And then you use that to actually solve this problem using recursion, which has a base case and a recursive case. And before I complete, I just want to point out the difference between this base here and this base. They need not be the same because this base points to the integer that is defined in void main. Once power has been called, the method power has been called with base and power raised as arguments, the definition that is here is unrelated to that. So what I can do is I can just call this base one and power raised one. Of course, I have to change the code here to reflect all that, but you will see that the result will exactly be the same. Okay, so I'll just execute this. And you'll see that it's two to the power of five equals 32. Okay, I can just do it with another thing like three to the power of four. I'm just going to 81 and run it. You will see that, okay, as 81. So this variable base one is defined in the power method here. And this variable base is actually defined in the main method. So they are not the same. So you can name them differently if you want. By convention, we try to keep them the same to improve readability, but that is not essential. Okay. With this, I'll conclude this video. I hope you understood basics of recursion and how to write methods in Java using this video. Thank you for watching.